Okay. So this is um yeah, this is means for developers. So uh we can go through uh so yeah, if you're not a developer, if you want to listen in, you're obviously more than welcome to. Um but yeah, if you're a developer, that this is for you. So um what we're gonna talk about, I guess like anyone I'll let people ask questions and concerns of what they need. We're gonna we're about to release uh to do like a big release with, like our uh climbing the climbing repo with like updated docs and updated validators. I think one of the issues was uh the validators were stalling sometimes and like the we're working in Python so sometimes it could clog up the memory and it can just stall the voting and that might stall some of the miners. But what we're gonna do as replacement, we're going to essentially set a um, maximum uh state like a number of blocks of staleness to a thousand. So we will trigger that today. Uh, upon releasing the sub the, the features, so uh, it encourages everyone to run the new uh, validators, and then we just go from there and then improve from there. But um, in terms of miners, like miners will essentially right now we're going to be working uh, based on the three default miners, um, or like the the open AI like the, the default ones we've been working with, and then we're going to be expanding our validators to more things uh, over the coming weeks. But yeah, right now it's just to stabilize the validator and minor code and also having that standardized in Docker. Um, but yeah, like, so, but yeah, I guess we can have this meeting. And uh, I know some people like Cool Razor wanted to talk about some of our practices. Cause yeah, I'm a, I'm a really, uh, I'm not a conventional coder. So I have not been following <laughs> conventional practices to say the least. So um, yeah, we can talk about that. Uh yeah, cool razor. Do you want to start that off? Oh yeah, sure. I just uh, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of up level just you know the project a bit. I think we we've we've come really far and we have a lot of modules in the works. And uh, I think that the thing that we need to turn our eye to, in addition to that, would be uh, you know getting some more mat maturity and stability. And so on that note, what I kind of I want kind of wanted to find uh get a, a finger on the pulse of what the community how what the headaches are what we can do to move forward and so i have a couple ideas in place that i've been working on i've already created two pipelines i just haven't been able to merge them into main yet but um, already i've had some benefit because i i created a pipeline that runs a bunch of checks and they're just basic checks but what happens is then i pulled um, some updates in and then they already failed on the, on those checks and i was able to catch it so i could already work on it ahead of time on the branches that I'm working on. But that kind of um, brings up not a question, but like the concept of like we should have more of that software development life cycle to use a buzzwordy term. And so I wanted to kind of find out what does the group think? What does everyone think as a community? Should we do things like that? Like for instance, should we have responsible engineers? meaning people who are responsible for a section or piece of commune and then everyone else writes you know writes whatever they're writing then if they write it like here's an example if so, let's say somebody wants to edit the blockchain specific code they make a pr i think it would make sense to have someone who's like the responsible engineer who always who's the person who has to approve the prs related to blockchain right so right now a fam's just like holding up the entire world right and it's not sustain sustainable like as we grow we need to be able to take that burden on together so i think it would be make a lot of sense to kind of think in those terms sorry i'm just kind of word vomiting here off the cuff a little bit but those are some of the ideas i had i have uh, pipelines i want to do i think that would make sense but i want to get a you know check in with everyone else is everyone on board with that idea that will slow merges but it should reduce bugs and i i kind of think we're there but what does everyone else think Anyone? Anyway, I'll open up the floor to anyone else. Yeah, like, uh, let me uh, shout out Corny. You were saying you're looking forward to some of the, the Docker stuff I was doing and thinking of doing a video on that. Um, did you have a chance to look at it? Do you think that's a good approach for us and maybe some of the, this, the concept of doing uh, PRs, and I, I don't know how familiar you are with that. I think you're more on the visual side, but no, what are your thoughts? I want to get your your. No, take I'm on. definitely familiar with that because uh, because we have the developers we have in, in in our company, but I think this is a good approach because that way we can have a, as you say, it would be less 
less buggy and more state more stability and easier easier for people Sorry, to follow. I called out Cordy, but I don't I don't know if he's a, a ready yet. <laughs> oh wait wait wait. Right. Um, wait wait wait. So okay oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Right now, oh sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was muted. I I just take it quickly there. I I agree with you. I think it would be the, definitely the right approach. That way we can get a bit more stability and a bit easier to follow what's going on as well. Exactly, and and, the, and it's not to reduce collaboration. It's just to make it healthier, right? Like I think this community is awesome, and I think being able to work together is awesome. But if we, there just needs to be a little bit more of a format so that we don't step on each other, and I, I think I think that makes a lot of sense, right? So that's kind of kind of my point there. Um, and I know that I think I, th I think there there be some value to that. Clearly, is something that I feel. But like I said, I wanted to get kind of. The community's thoughts on that and then where do we go from there or where do we go from here and then I, I in my world i would what i see is in the future what we do is we do pipelines we have prs the prs kick off all these tests because you, you've all done we've all done coding right you're writing on one piece of thing it works fine and then you didn't test something totally unrelated and it turns out it did affect it so that's where the pipelines come in handy because for instance i ran all the commands I knew about, and it it worked before, and then there was a change that had to do with validators, and then for some reason C stats didn't work. And the, but the point is, I don't think the the work that was done had anything to do specifically or intentionally with C stats, but it's to help catch that kind of stuff. Anyway, so we we've got that working. We, we just need to get some uh, more things ironed out, and then we'll get it we'll get it plugged in. But yeah, I really want feedback from the community. What does everybody think? What does everyone want? This is, you know, supposed to be a commune community, right? Um, I can call out names if if that's helpful, but uh, and fam for sure, obviously, you know, it's your deal. So let me know what you get, you think. But uh, that's just kind of where my head's at. Yeah, I, I can start. Um, yeah, so commune's meant to connect like anything people make. That's kind of the goal, and then. Basically, people vote for what they want to use. That's the high end goal. Right now, it's, you know, obviously confusing to use because it's more of a jack of all trades and a master of none, which is fine. Um, but, you know, I understand that that's the weakness. And people, sometimes, some, most people, especially miners, just want to run something and see what their APR is and see how much tokens they get. So I'm trying to incorporate that perspective a bit more. Um, and I think it starts with having more stable validators, more stable miners, and a lot more readable docs. Um, and so, yeah, we've been changing a lot of things, and I think the docs have de are definitely outdated. Um, and yeah, like I think that those, those, that's the first priority for me, at least. Well, I think I think getting uh, more stability in my mind would be even more more of a priority but i think all of it, all, it the problem is, is yeah the, it's priority the whole set the whole set <laughs> the stability so, i agree is, is obviously the, the most important yeah so really quick on that note though with the documentation <clears throat> it's just the main repo in the docs folder is that where the, does the website generate all those all those markdown files to get the documentation there or is that a separate process i think that's a separate process we should connect those two although i'm not sure how i could ask I, the front end team to do that yeah, I, I can help you with that. I've seen other projects that do that where I forget what it's, it's called like DocuSource, I want to say, but there's there's teams yeah. that do this really well that all you have to do is edit the edit the markdown in your GitHub repo and your website pulls from that. But uh, that way you just have one single source of source of truth, which is I think we'd all agree a really good good approach to go with. So that sounds really good. Um yeah, no, that sounds that sounds really good. So it sounds like we've we've got a couple focuses on, but one of the other questions I had for you, fam, because I don't I don't I'm not in the GitHub organization, like from a very literal standpoint. Uh, so who can approve PRs? Is it are is it just you or is there a group of people? Uh, right now it's well, it's me and several people. Um, but I think mainly it's me that approves the PRs on the commune branch. I could obviously add other admins as well to make that process smoother. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, mainly it's me. And um, for the other branches, like the front end, that's uh, mainly nice boy uh, and someone else. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was like Sluxin, who Lux, Lux JS. 
uh, and also um, Fabino. I'm not sure he's not. I don't think he's here. But uh, yeah, for the it's I, I don't really approve PRs for the front end, and then for the subspace repo, the blockchain. Um, that one's interesting. It's uh, I can approve PRs, but it's I'm not actually uh, the main maintainer of that. It's uh, the uh, AGI commies are usually the maintain maintainers of the releases. So it's it's a bit decentralized. There's three separate teams, I guess, for uh, in, in in terms of like our main core repos. Okay, that, one for that, each repo. No, I yeah. didn't know any of that. That's awesome. So you, yeah. you're saying Luxon helps with the front end as well, or did I misunderstand that? Yes. Yeah. See, well, we, yeah, I guess that's one issue we're having is that we have a lot of front ends <laughs> and that's the goal. Lots of front ends, but like, you know, we, uh, we have, I think different iterations of our core front end. So I'm trying to merge those because, uh, Lux is mainly focused on com hub. Um, and, and so there's that, but there's also, um, something else, uh, that I think there's like, you know, the, the com, the com, well, not com to chat, uh, like commune ai.org is also another one. Um, but yeah. Oh, I thought that was the front end when you ran for a Okay. Commune ai.org is the front end, but com, yeah, so that's the thing. We have lots of different front ends. And so we're trying to standardize it into one so that we don't have to do redundant work. Um, but, but I think the main front end is like the front end, like the front end repo. That's our main, that's our main repo. Okay, good. And Nice Boy is the guy managing that, basically, or the maintainer. Yes. Yeah. Maybe maintainer is a better word than responsible engineer. That that comes from my enterprise work. But uh, sure. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, I think maintainer makes sense. So I think so. The reason the reason I'm asking is because like I think what would make sense in the main commune repo is to kind of divide and conquer a little bit and like have the have it be PR based, right? So that people so that you have at least two sets of eyeballs on every line of code. And then also we'll we'll get the CI/CD in there. So, like, and I I saw some work that you were doing. I think on the validator branch, where it seems like what you're doing, and I think you alluded to this earlier, where you're separating out core modules to, from like minor mo modules, for lack of a better term. Um, yeah. And I think that's really excellent because right mm -hmm. now when I try to run the tests, it kind of tries to run everything. Which uh, what I want to do is make it very specific to the minimum viable product right so the basic yes. the basic functionality so it sounds like i i can work with you on that that would be huge i think that because then what i sure. will do is i will make our pipelines just zero in on that and then that will be like level one of like bug checking which would be huge and then after that we could like do a separate ones for like modules that are separate but it won't break it won't prevent others other things kind of a deal but that would be that would be epic so i think that's really good um did you I'll, like I, I get the 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 feeling that this group and just the sentiment and even crypto in, in general wants to stay shy away from like coding standards and i kind of i kind of understand that and i kind of agree with that because it should be hey if you come up with an approach and it's better than the previous approach then that approach should be adopted and, and moved forward while that is true and i kind of understand that approach we also need to make sure that the minimum viable product works the way that it does and then that carries forward and we can iterate in a more careful way but the modules themselves just go ham write a module however you want and uh, so that's kind of like my thought on it um but yeah and then the other thing i wanted to talk about is like is should there be more organization at the on the engineering level? We can do like these weekly meetings. It sounds like they would be beneficial. Should we ha like dedicate someone who can kind of be the shepherd of those meetings and the shepherd of like organizing the team? We could like don't freak out. I'm not. I don't actually mean this, but like we could do scrum mm -hmm. and scrum of scrums. Like the idea that people that different teams do their thing and then they have representatives talk to the the main people organizing if that makes sense and maybe that's getting overly organized but the idea that what i what i don't want to have happen is multiple teams working on the same thing what are your thoughts Vince? yeah no I, I i agree i think that's obviously an efficiency uh if multiple people are working on the same thing like i i don't think we have too much of that but but yeah, like that's ideal for us not to not to uh, overlap. And I guess for the front end, um, I've had I think we have we had an issue a bit 
with the front end and partly because I wanted people to add PRs and review it. Um, so having multiple people like look at it and like add a PR to it, to me was like, I thought was an interesting idea, but at the same time, yeah, I created diverging branches, uh, and then that created redundant work. But yeah, no, I, I guess I, I, I guess high level, I, I do agree with having, uh, that as a, as a basis of like, you know, of doing that, of, uh, not having, making sure things aren't conflicting or people are stepping on each other's toes. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And, and that point about having PRs and multiple branches, I think that's the, like the point of that is to avoid having duplicate work. So if, if that was done, like where we're having PRs and people are reviewing it and somehow that created more branches, that doesn't make sense to me. Cause it, like if somebody makes a PR and someone else is reviewing it, you just edit that branch or you write the code comments and then the original uh, person who made the PR makes incorporates those changes. But yeah, that makes sense. So what do you think about like, cause this, this project has grown like exponentially over the months that's that ha has gotten us here. Right. So do you think it would make sense to divide and conquer here a little bit and then like, like build out a team in the sense of maybe like a, I don't know, a communications manager, engineering manager for lack of a better term, whatever term makes sense that way that it's not all falling on your shoulders. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's good. I, I just, yeah, this is obviously new for me. So uh, if you recommend, if there are any ideas or if anyone can recommend uh, communications managers, like I do hire people that translate. And like, and I don't know, I think I could probably better hire a communications manager um, to manage that. I don't think translation should cost that much. <laughs> um, like they'll like, they'll basically like they're not really communications managers, but yeah, anyways, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm open to that. Yeah. And also divide and conquering, like seeing who's on which projects. That's why I did the um, channels instead of the DMs because, and I, I really hope if everyone listening and I hope all the developers are listening, cause like, honestly, like I, I, I want, <laughs> I want you all to know that like there's one of me and all of you are corresponding asynchronously with me. And so many of you, uh, like many of you, like, like they'll, you'll just say, Hey, and then if I don't respond, like in an hour, you say, Hey again. And like, you know, it's just like, I understand you want my attention, but if all of you are doing that, like, that's very distracting and, um, you know, just be patient is all I'm asking. Um, like, and like, if, especially if we've like worked for weeks, like you don't have to like. Like if I, let's say if, if I, if I don't respond within like an hour and like, you know, maybe I haven't paid or whatever. Right. You know, I've paid you like the past like five or six weeks. So like, you know, I may like, maybe we can, I'm trying to automate this. So if, I know we're trying to automate this, uh, but it, it's, it's just kind of annoying. And like someone, you call me and then you hang up just to get my attention. And like, it's just like super distracting. And I, I, I love all of your hard work, but it's just like, like these things are, I don't think are very respectful. Like they don't respect, like, I wouldn't do that to people. And I don't think you would like it if I called you and then you got like, you know, it's just like being, you know, just please just take, try to see my side of like, you know, understanding that, you know, it's, it's, uh, like, it just is very distracting and, and, and just let me get to back to you. Um, and, and I'd also recommend we have all of our conversations or a lot of our conversations of updates in the discord channel and probably starting with like, you know, by the start of the week, we, you say what the deliverables are for the end of the week and then you complete them. And then we can say how much that like maybe how much of a bounty that would be. Uh, sometimes I would go through some of your PRs. And you would bill me for, let's say, things that I don't think would require that much time. And I'm not saying this all, I'm not saying everyone does this. I'm just saying sometimes I find this. So like, if, like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be honest here with everyone, but it's like, I, I do think there's an incentive to overbill. And if I'm trying to, um, like, 
make this as effective as possible with what we we use because we're not VC backed and this might push me into being going into a VC and like let's say backing us to fund like to to have more um to fund for more developers but like we can't like like I can't be spending like three or four thousand dollars a week on someone like you can't like overbuild me like that and I just see like twenty lines of code being done like I'll divide the code by the out like I'll divide the number of hours by the number of lines of code. Um, and that's not a great ideal, but if it's like, if you write like two lines of code per hour, to me, that's, that, that's fishy. <laughs> but like, like there's a lot of research you can do, but I think two lines an hour is like pretty, pretty small. Like that's like, I think that's quite, I think maybe 10 to 20 lines an hour is reasonable, but like, yeah, it's just like, like I'll read the code. So like, you know, I'll know how, how long this would take like me. And then I'll even like be like, okay, well, I'm assuming you're as fast as me, if not faster, because you're more specialized in the subject. So like, you know, like if I'm like, if I can do it in like, let's say eight hours, then you could do it in four. If I can do it in 16 hours, you could like, I'm just trying to give that a baseline. I'm not trying to like, maybe, and maybe, maybe like, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to like be like super anal about this, but I just like sometimes the billing doesn't really make sense. I think there's always an incentive because um, I've been in this situation too. Like I've I've been in this situation. Like sure, it's like you bill whatever you think you know. Uh, you, you can like how am I supposed to check? And so there's obviously there's a, there's a bit of trust that I rely on, and that's more on my end than on the person that's you know. It's just like I, I just would respect that. Um, and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely. We've all been there. Right, man. I mean, I, there's been, you know, it, it, it's hard when, you know, when you're not in it, you know, and somebody's doing a bunch of work and then they come back to you and it's like, oh, that was two lines of code. But I've also been on both sides of that. I've definitely also seen where I was working for like days on a problem and it turns out that the fix was two lines, but it took hours of troubleshooting and iterations to get to those two lines. So it is difficult, like for sure. But I also understand, like clearly, Fam is like the subject matter expert, the SME on this whole on the all of commune. But I, but yeah, definitely, it's something that we want to be cognizant of is like make sure that we're being wise with our fiduciary responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes sense that you know just kind of keeping that in mind, and maybe the bounty system is a better approach. But I think that's definitely something we should take on uh, conversations on a case by case basis kind of deal because I think everyone in here is like we're in a group was also in, in we're all individuals at the same time so i think that would make sense to to kind of narrow the scope a little bit on on that one to the individual cases but no i i get it like uh i think i think part of what's going on to your point earlier about being hit up by a bajillion dms like i i get that that's overwhelming i personally could not handle that like i just I straight up could not handle that so I appreciate your vulnerability there, fam. I think this kind of goes in line with what I was talking about with uh, with organization. I, I honestly think there should be like two managers. One, one is a module manager and one is a core commune manager. Because I think you do really well at understanding like the, the miners in the sense of like all like the module class, right? Like that is a core piece of commune. And like, if you were to focus your efforts on that and the validator module and the, like working with the substrate team and really like hone in on that core functionality, that would be huge. And then separately, we could have someone else who's fielding all of the module questions. Cause you're right. Like, I mean, just look at discard. You can see like, I don't even know what it is, like 30 different, uh, channels for different modules. And then and like, if you're getting hit up by every one of those teams, like that's just ridiculous, that's unsustainable. So I think it makes sense to kind of branch out that responsibility. I mean, I can, I can, can you imagine if you, if you just had to work on the basic core functionality of commune and then how ex explosive that would be in the sense of like that, then, then all the other people are focusing on just modules. And mm -hmm. I, I say just modules, but that's like also the heart of the ecosystem, but that relies on the core functionality so much. So I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And so let's get some immediate return on investment, right? We're here right now, the people who showed up. So the people who showed up, we get to make the decisions. That's my view on it. But fam, ultimately, you get the ultimate decision. Who do you think would be a good person to nominate 
to be a module manager, I would nominate you for the core commune manager. But what do you think? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on all that, Pam? What everything I just threw out there? Yeah, um, I have to think about that. Uh, let's see, going through. But it's it's a good question. <laughs> whoever I, I would say, whoever would like volunteer. Uh, to to who understands commune or who wants to understand commune more uh can volunteer i i, I can't really say who specifically is the most knowledgeable unfortunately so i think everyone i think i was mainly the one maintaining it and maybe that was a problem i didn't really force people to look at it and then maybe we would debug it together um and so that was probably a bottleneck for me but yeah like i'm willing to accept any nominations for whoever wants to mon monitor um project manage obviously or if no one wants to that's cool we can find people but yeah um yeah unfortunately that's mainly mainly uh me and probably a few other people uh this yeah no that that makes sense how about how about this how about we do this i i like the nomination idea but let's do it with time so why don't we have till the i don't know end of the week People will put it in general, put it somewhere, wherever you think, fam, and then people nominate, and then maybe the people, and then whoever you think, yeah, that's a, that's a good guy. One of the things I wanted to illustrate here, like I'm a technical guy, but like I've I've come to realize that there are two different, there's many different sets of skills, but they're, you know, we've all heard like soft skills, right? And yeah. soft skills are a whole nother skill set, and I I've definitely seen, um, there, people have even written like books about this, but like you'll find like a that people like in an engineering department, someone like is an amazing coder and then they get promoted and promoted and eventually they get promoted to manager. But the problem is that's a totally different skill set. So even if we have really good coders here that people want to nominate, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good at like uh, at leading teams. So yeah. what I'm saying is we should really think about this in the sense of look for nominees that show leadership qualities. Like I, in my uh, tenure working in engineering, I've actually seen people like oh, I had this one scrum master and people have their feelings about agile, totally understand that. But I will say one of the best managed scrum masters I ever had was basically non-technical. But dude, that guy could soft skill like crazy. He was so good at all those communications, being consistent, not overly complicated, but being complicated enough and technical enough to be able to get us to do what we need. And it was just amazing. It just unlocked the team's potential. And that's the point of what we need. We need people like that, people who can unlock the community's potential. And that's a soft skill thing. I think that's really the the, the pain point right here. And poor fam is taking on all the soft skills, all the technical skills, and then trying to manage all of it all at the same time, and then hoping people will like step up there. And it just hasn't matured or hasn't happened. So I'm I'm kind of hoping to stoke the fire a little bit and be like, let's do that. So I think, why don't we come up with a list of people we need in, in terms of roles? And these are like, these are very, uh, what do you call it? Uh, soft, like nothing, nothing here is in stone. So if somebody comes up with an idea after this meeting, pitch it, totally fine, you know, whatever, whatever the group wants, I'm not here to dictate anything. But I do think, it, I do think that some organization would benefit us a lot. So for instance, if Nice Boy is doing the front end now, I think he should be our front end guy. And it sounds like he kind of already is, but more of that concept played out. So a module manager to field all that like individual module stuff that's not core commune would be really good. So I think uh, the roles that we Sorry. need, communication type, uh, communications people or person or group, and then also a module manager and a core commune manager. And then I think th if we had those three things kind of figured out, I think that would like help a lot within regular weekly meetings between those managers, maybe in this setting would be good. And we could set up a stage so that they can kind of go through the weekly updates from their sections. And I think that'd be really helpful because what, because then what would happen is like, I'll give you a scenario, the core commune manager says, oh yeah, we're working on this new validator feature. It's going to add this ability. And then, a mod, then the module manager says, oh, actually, I already got a guy who's working on something similar. It's tangential, but actually, he, we were going to do it as a module. And then they have that conversation, and then the, that duplicate work doesn't happen. Or maybe it does get incorporated into becoming a core module. And then that means it gets into the CI CD for getting all the checks and tests as if it was as a core module versus one that won't because it's just it's more of an example module. So I, 
you guys get that concept, right? So I think I think that would be a cool idea. And they could all be done in this like public forum. Like I think that's that's totally fine. But yeah, so I think those are the three roles like community manager, module manager, core commune manager. And then we can kind of go with that. what do you think, fam? And anyone else? Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. Yeah, you can hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I I think that's a that's a good thing to start. I think I can start with uh, reconverting all of the uh tests and climbing into pie tests. Uh, I've kind of like, I'm yeah, I'm almost I'm about to publish this new update that removes the core stuff. It will clean everything up, update the docs. And then we can go from there. Uh, we can include PyTest so for uh, so we can essentially have continuous integration or CIDC. Um, yeah, like uh, yeah, that's kind of my plan. Uh, and then yeah, having I do agree with the team structure, having a core and um, like modules team where the modules don't conflict. I'm even thinking maybe we should have a separate repo for modules, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, we're doing a little refactoring of this, the folder structure a bit to make it so that um, like the modules are more apparent as you enter the the repo. It's not hidden or something. But yeah, I think this is all. I agree with this. Yeah, it's more stable. Makes it more stable, more clean. Yeah, I think that'd be great. And it'd be nice to have, uh, and, and what will come out of this, then we'll have things like a roadmap, and then we can have milestones attached to it. And we can have a very like, focused trajectory of where we're going. And uh, I think that'd be awesome. I definitely want to pair with you today, if possible, on the, that work that you're, you just mentioned, because that sure. will 100% affect what I'm working on right now, and probably fix the bugs that I'm seeing that I want fixed. So that yes. is like, if you move, like I've seen some of those sweeping changes that you're working on, which is great, but we have to work in concert so that we can get this in there. So the pain point yeah. of CICD is that is that when you like totally refactor something, it can break a test even though it works, but it forces you yes. to fix the test too, which is also a good thing. It just means it will slow things down, but then the trade-off is you get reliability. So yeah, so let's pair today if you have time. I'd love to do that, and we can even like work on the same branch and all that kind of good stuff. We'll make it work. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm really I'm I'm down to do that. Uh... I think we should definitely have uh, this for today. Yeah, I, I've just been really. This is all suspended the validator, um, and yeah, like uh, I just want to get out of this rut in this situation because I just remember this still happening. I don't know. It's it's it's, it, it's it's due time that people see what 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 we're actually doing. Like this is like. I, I don't know. I just have a hard time communicating, and there's. Uh, I would say a lot of my distraction probably comes from managing people. So if we find a way to just uh, divide and conquer, and have less uh, synchronous uh, like interruptions in my workflow by like managing, like just like people like manage like interrupting me or like you know, which is fine, but it's like. You know, I don't mind updates, but we need to have it like more asynchronous and like, I guess, divided and uh, distributed more effectively, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. that makes sense. I would be careful with asynchronous, though. And the reason I say that is because that can turn into a large volume, right? But by okay. so like, like, think about it. If we just did like a stand up type thing or even a weekly meeting where you know that that's when the information will get disseminated to you, you just got like 100 asynchronous communication messages in 15 minutes right? Like wiped out. Now you're not distracted throughout the rest of the week with which with what would have been a 100 different messages. Yeah, because n none of them are all one message, right? Somebody needs to convey a thing. And it's going to be at least five, 10, maybe 20 interactions on that one co topic. But if you yeah. centralize those into one point in your week, you're actually saving time. Look, I I know meeting hell is a thing, like for sure. I don't want to like fill our calendars with meetings. That's absolutely not what I'm saying, but there is a balance there. And I I hear I hear what you're saying. Not everyone can meet at the same time. That's also a challenge that we have to figure out and overcome. Okay. That's one of the reasons okay. why I want to do it here. 
um on discord and we can even like record and upload them none of this is yeah. like, you know, secretive who cares so i think yeah. i think it would be a good idea um i did yeah I, th I think that's awesome i really like it i think uh having that module manager would be huge in the core commie manager i did want to paint a picture for you though um i worked at a startup it was the best job i've ever had it was years ago but one of the founding guys i think he was employee number three at the company he uh was an amazing coder and uh we, they kept coding company kept building they had hockey stick growth it was a million dollar company then it eventually became a 50 million dollar company they acquired other companies but what about that one guy that engineer what happened to him so instead of just like bubbling up into manager and vp they ended up hiring other people but what happened to him is he became the architect and that was his like sole job and he was so good at it he was laser focused on being the software architect so he would be in technical meetings but he never had to meet with like marketing you didn't have to meet with all these other teams and i'm not saying i'm not trying to paint that you don't have to do any of that but my the whole thing i'm trying to say is like there there are ways to make this work where people like just dive into their skill set specifically it's not fair in my mind that you are holding up the entire world right now and so i th i think you should have the ultimate authority that's what this guy had he was employee number three he was the architect and he was really good at it and it just allowed him to blossom in that he didn't want to be the manager and his wow. and so what they did is that he hired uh, other people and then they flourished as managers and yeah. other technical people had other technical roles it was it was actually it was fantastic but it, i just thought saw that as a really cool thing because a lot of times for technical people you're going to get dead ended unfortunately mm -hmm. in technical in, in tech like you get to become like a subject matter expert but then where do you go so anyway i just thought that was a kind of a, a cool good news story for like you're, if we were if you were to become the commune architect and like just that like would it would, you know what i mean like that could be kind of incredible and you'd still get all that decision making i'm not trying to pitch that it's just a, a cool story that i remember this guy just having the best time of his life being that architect anyway just something i wanted to throw out there um giving up something to gain something essentially there's a question in the chat. What was this? Uh, I think I missed a bunch of this stuff. Communications manager. Oh, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. Uh, I want to catch up here. I'm going to read the comment chat, make sure we don't miss anything. But go ahead, Fan, if you have anything else or anyone else has something they want to add. Uh, I was just going to add there. I think poor Fam is juggling, that, like you say, 50 balls at the same time now. If he can pass on some of those balls, it's going to make his life easier and everybody else's life easier at the same time. Because so we don't want you to hit a wall at full speed, Fam. That's why I think everybody wants this, if that makes sense. Yeah. Could I could yeah. I speak to that a little bit? I know I'm not a dev or anything, but when it comes to like organizational structure for the purposes of like a founder's vision coming to fruition, I I've been around the block a bit. Is that okay? Yes, yeah. please go for it. All right, yeah, for sure. And I I mean Cool Razor, I, I support uh the narrative of that story and i think through history of experience like you know like wheels were built and then they get added onto and like unique things happen based on the framework of something that has uh allowed great ideas to scale into incredible entities and uh and one of the hardest things for me was to find was to delegate like the tasks that i don't want to do that I can do, but I don't want to do. Um, um, but not only delegating it, but delegating it to like the qualified people. And uh, there is going to probably, if that's a route that uh, that commune chooses to go, uh, there is going to be a little bit of try and fail in respect to finding that you know the pip into your Jordan, so to speak, in in whatever capacity as a basketball analogy. Um, and uh, and that's a way for yeah, like like uh, Corny said, not sixty balls being uh juggled by uh by by two hands um and with that said there is a there is a degree of that um but there's like a maybe what could happen is like a strategic plan or path towards what that would look like and doing it incrementally versus delegating 50 out of 60 things and then having to you know figure it all out but doing it piece by piece so if you ever wanted to talk fam about like the any of the pieces that you know you really wish you didn't handle but uh but you kind of have to and what would be the first thing that you would shed into hands that you know trust and like to to juggle that ball 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, that's, so, yeah, yeah, no, I, I think definitely creating priority list and uh, is something that I need to focus on a bit more. Uh, and then kind of like targeting those key components or those key priorities. Um, something that I have trouble with sometimes. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to talk about that. Yeah. Oh. And, and I just want to be clear, like what you've done, what you've done to date, man, is and again, obviously, with the help of many in this room. So all of you guys, what what has happened with Kami to date is nothing short of sorry about the noise, nothing short of amazing. And uh, it, it's such a great foundation to like to build off of. And I'm just I'm just happy and grateful to be here. Thanks. I appreciate that. I appreciate hearing that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, had a lot of ups and downs, but uh, yeah, this isn't our first rodeo, so you know, just trying to uh, you know, keep committed, uh, put stay stay at the long, just look at the long term goals, um, seeing what we can get done on the day, on the week, but I I, I do think that uh, having the priority priority of stability. Is important, um, and yeah, like uh, any way you can help or recommend uh, me to get closer to that. Uh, if you if you don't see me doing it the right the way I think, the way you think it should be done, then like I'm obviously open to to, to recommendations or like suggestions or your advice and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Well, that that's dope. That's that's really great leadership. Uh, historically, what I found is that there's a book called Death by Meetings, and in it it talks about you know how to have meetings with purpose, and this is one of them, by the way, uh, one with purpose. Um, and to answer your question, like how to get it done, is really like tailored to what it is that you and and other majority stakeholders want to see, and normally how that would work is like, so you have quarterlies, you have monthlies, you have weeklies, but they're all premised on what the annual goal is. So if I want to get from point A to point B, every single step in A.1, A.2, A.3 is directed towards getting to B. So it starts with the where is it that you want to go, and then from that, every single, and what is the strategy, and then from that, every single compartmentalized a uh, link in the chain can navigate with autonomy if they understand what the goals are as it relates to their 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 silos right whether it's communications whether it's marketing whether it's dev whether it's you know uh you know so on and so forth so I, I think that really what it would take is it would take like half a day of you getting in a room with uh you know a handful of people um maybe one that would kind of understand what questions to ask to figure out what it is that's wanted and then from there the 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 quarterly weekly monthly uh like courses of action can be can be handled with autonomy in a in a in a much more uh synchronized way and uh razor you seem to have a a little bit of experience uh feel free to give me your insight on what i just shared or whether there's a different path or direction in order to get to a place. Like we all wanna you know, synchronize, that's great. And in that platitude, there's practical application on how to synchronize, but synchronizing towards where, right? Is uh, I think where the conversation needs, uh, needs to start, at least that's been my experience. Exactly, I definitely agree with you. Um, that was very well put. I love that analogy of like, a, you know, Michael Jordan and, you know, Scottie Pippen, I believe it was. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people say, <laughs> I realize there's a younger crowd here, I'm imagining, <laughs> but um, the reason Michael Jordan was so successful, or the Lakers were, was, or I'm sorry, the Bulls, is because he uplifted his whole team. Like, he made his all of his teammates so much better. So, like, it wasn't just all the 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 shots that he made, it was how much more shots the other teammates made because he was there. And so that's what that's what really did it. That's what set him apart almost more than anything else. And so I definitely see that in BAM. It's just the thing is, is right now there's just so much to do. So we've gotta we've gotta organize on that. Exactly what you were saying. 
Um, I keep thinking your name is Champagne. Is that, is that right? <laughs> Shamination. Um, and yeah, anyway, th I think that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, oh, I think we should do that. It's just um, the how. And so I think in the near term, we come up with a couple of roles, and then those people become responsible for those section areas. And so, like, for instance, for a module manager, if anyone had a question with, like, internally or externally, <laughs> that one guy, like, the last thing I want to have happen is, you know, we start going rogue, and then the mod module manager doesn't know about it. Like, they should be that funnel, that communication funnel. And the beauty of that is then they synthesize all that. So, like, to be very specific to FAM's situation, then he, can, this module manager, can talk to FAM, do like the five-minute update, and get information on the latest greatest from FAM. And then anyone who's pinging, like, this module manager is going to get hit up like twenty times a day, right? But then he's fielding that twenty times a day and relaying that information. He's like, "I'll get the specifics to you when I can." Blah blah blah. And that way, it's it's is creating more like like we have the synergy but at the same time we're able to not have everything funneled to one person it's just not sustainable and frankly like fam needs to be able to take a vacation i've been in situations where i was the the dude and that meant i couldn't take a vacation because every the house of cards would fall down and that's that's not how it should work there should be also redundancy even for these roles you know but right now i just i want to make sure that we have a we were able to help the fam succeed and help commune succeed and we're already doing that i think this is a huge part of that so i'm really excited about it i think uh we the billing thing is another thing we can talk about but I, i'd rather take that offline and kind of figure out because i think that's more of an individual case type thing and uh, we can we can look at that separately but I do think module manager, core manual, core commune manager, and then also communications manager, at least for a start. I, and then honestly, a year from now, when we're like a thousand people in this meeting, we'll probably need even more sub teams. But this is how we get to that size. So I, I, I don't really have anything more to add. I do think the roadmap and milestones thing dovetails nicely with, a, with a, what you were saying, Shamination, and having like a mission statement. I think we have pieces of these, but it'd be nice to, I think it would be nice to update and repeat them. So keep us on, on track and on focus, which would be a part of that weekly. And like you're saying, monthly and quarterly. So I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, so absolutely. Just, and like, it, just, just for example, like, you know, there's a, let's say for example, there's an annual, um, like planning meeting, right? Um, I would imagine that there would be a handful of people in there and they would be able to offer that information that's gathered in there to the handful of people that are within their, uh, I, I'm just going to use the word silo, within their uh, silo or, 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 or component, um, you know, piece of the, the, the organizational structure. And, and at the risk of sounding like, um, you know, because the whole idea is freedom and everything else. And I think that through these processes, systems and tools of communication, of making decisions and of of taking action, it actually empowers that idea of freedom um, and and creativity versus impeding it. So, I mean, like like you said, Cool Racer, uh, I mean, I'm 42 years old, so sometimes I sound like an old dog, right? But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, man. If th So there's this analogy where there's a soccer team, and, you know, if it was an organizational structure, two people would be shooting on their own net, two would be trying to take the ball from the other player, and only one would actually be trying to shoot at the goal on the other end of the field. And uh, how that can be mitigated in any type of, you know, a rapidly growing entity is is just through these processes. So I would love to share with whoever the right people are on certain processes of compartmentalization for the purposes of cohesion and transparency uh, that I have seen work for companies that like the one you mentioned, Cool Razor, started with three people and ended up being 300. And I'd be lying if I said I was responsible for that. But I did exactly what I'm suggesting is I got somebody who's just freaking badass at taking something that I created to the next level and letting them handle it so I can go to Hawaii with my family, you know? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I love that analogy about the soccer team. That's actually a very good point. Like, if you have, if we have complete autonomy, right, and ultimate freedom and zero organization, I'm not saying we have zero organization today, but if, if that's like the soccer field, then you could have everyone playing defense. But the, at the end of the day, how many uh, goals are getting scored? Like zero, right? So my point in saying that 
is velocity. So if we add a couple positions and a little bit more controls, like the PRs and whatnot, that's going to be some administrative overhead. It just that's a fact. But what is the end goal? And to use an agile term, velocity. We're trying to get more stuff done. And if we get a list, so it's, it's finding that balance of just enough organization not to slow us down, but to increase our velocity, then, then we hit that sweet spot. Right, because like, uh, is then we're able to unlock all that potential, and then to go back to the soccer analogy, like, so we're like, all right, we already have three defenders, we don't need more. So like, become a halfback or a, you know whatever. We figure out where everyone wants to be. Boom! Now we're a team that can get into the B, the A league instead of being in the B league. So that's where I want to go. I think I think we have all the elements here, and Fam has done a just a killer job building this community and building this this tool if you will called commune that can do just about anything and it's funny like when i was trying to figure out learn it for the first time i was like what do you mean it can do anything and it, and he's right it it can and that make becomes a complicated concept to explain but i see just a tremendous tremendous amount of potential so i'm really really excited we just need to get that little tiny piece of organization going and i think i think it'll explode it and uh, i'm really looking forward to it so in any case, was there that's all I had for today that questions I wanted to throw out there and just see, get a level set with other, the community. I really appreciate you jumping in there, um, XO and uh, Chamination and uh, Fan for putting this together. Thank you for doing that. Really appreciate it. Was there anything that you had, uh, Fan, that you wanted to add or any closing remarks or any more, anything else or want to keep going? Um, yeah, uh, no, I think that's that good. Uh, yeah, I appreciate uh Kind words and uh, no, I, I I agree. I think, I think the the gestures are clear is to uh, get things stable, do continuous uh, CI/CD, uh, and then not the the docs. Uh, those I want to. Uh, I was going to make an announcement in the next hour or two about that. Um, but yeah, like that's the goal for me uh, at least today. But yes, uh, having better structured. Uh, Take us offline how we can do that more specifically but yeah i'm totally open for that yep yeah i would just say let's make that make the, those decisions by end of week because i i just don't want that to linger either i don't want you to i don't want you to have to take on too much for too long right it's just yeah. it's not sustainable for anyone not sustainable for me i i could not get us this far just straight up totally 100 percent could not get us as far as you've gotten this group like i would do not have that ability at all so uh, i don't know if that's true man <laughs> i don't know if that's true i think anyone can do it it's just uh definitely not I i'm going yeah. to disagree with you on that i don't know how you've pulled this off in the sense that of the scale of it not your ability or lack of ability it's just incredible what you've put put together like full Thanks. stop incredible Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah man and when, when you guys have that meeting one of the thoughts fam is like if you were to put together, like in that meeting, put together a list of all the different high level, like uh, things that that you're that you're handling within commune, and then and then individualize the action items or the activities that are comprised within those categorical areas, that would be a great place to start. And then you could look at it and be like, okay, which ones do you like doing? Because let's start there. Because if you like what you do, then you're going to continue to be able to let that um unteachable creativity manifest because it's it's actually it's actually tied to like incredible skill sets as well right and then the ones that you're good at doing what you don't like doing that you know would be in like a secondary category and the ones that like you know and you get to define what these are by the way and the ones that you're okay at and don't like doing or the ones that you're okay at and like doing like you you take a look and see all of that and then you'll have an informed uh insight on where to start when it comes to off put um offloading onto again that individual or a group of individuals that you know trust and like or at least two of the three you know and like but don't well maybe you need trust but no one trusts but don't like but you want to get to know them and so on and so forth that might be a great uh critical path that might be an activity you can do on your own um and i'm sure there's men and women in this room that would or people that would like uh be happy to guide you if of course they have some insight into what that world looks like and I'm happy to help just, again, ask the right questions and everything else. I don't want anything. I just, you know, I want to be able to help. So if you want me to be in there to just kind of uh, not direct, but uh, like yeah. like facilitate the activities that are going to 
get you towards the outcomes that I would think you would want in some sort of, I guess, snapshot like that, I'm happy to ask those questions and help you get down to understandings. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Yeah, no, I really appreciate, uh, really appreciate this advice. And yeah, I think, uh, I need to, I, I know the NVIDIA CEO once said, you have to, uh, have a very heavy stomach and have low expectations, you know, build, expect things are going to not work or, uh, like a prepare for the worst. So involving, I think in order for us to be prepared, we need to definitely be uh, much more organized and, uh, uh, divide and conquer. Uh, I think these are, and yeah, like you know, and um, obviously, I, I think I'm really good at certain things, but really bad at other things. And I'm sure everyone has uh, a special skill that they could uh, help out with. And yeah, if you feel like you have strong opinion, then you probably know something pretty well. And uh, I'm always excited to hear, uh, or like you know, I'm I'm always willing to have like you know advice and. Uh, Probably will take it up if it, because <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. I try to be open minded as possible. Oh, awesome! I appreciate it. I think that's good. Um, really appreciated, Shamination. I was really impressed with how you worded things and your uh, expertise there. And I'm 40, so I definitely understood the <laughs> the Jordan reference. I just realized that you and I are in a group full of uh, youngins here. But no, it's good. It's all good. I, I'm excited to. I'm excited to be a part of this community. I am. I'm humbled to be able to even be able to talk in this group. So I appreciate it. So thank you very much. But uh, yeah, that's all I had. If if there wasn't anything else, we'll go ahead and close it out. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. If anyone has any go backs or anything else, definitely for sure uh, hit us up in the general chat. And then, or maybe actually the dev chat would be better. And then uh, we'll kind of go from there. Nominations should be in dev chat. Let's do that because this is all more centric there. If anyone has any idea. And then let's try to pick some people maybe Friday. Um, if anyone else has any better idea, go for it. But that's kind of what I was thinking. Sure. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I'm done for that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for attending. I appreciate everyone being able to, to make it. I know it was kind of last minute. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. All right, guys. Take care. One Let's, love, uh, everybody. Love. Oh. Let's uh, <laughs> let's be a community. Let's let's show what Kami is all about. You know, uh, I think I, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> it's all stuff we're building, and I think uh, yeah, let's just let's just continue making. Let's try to make this world a better place. <laughs> it's difficult to start a reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Take care, man. See ya.